Yeah. Call the City Commission meeting Thursday, September 22nd to uh, order. First order is uh, minutes from September 8th, 2016. Any changes, guys? I have no changes. No changes. Stand is written. Next item on the agenda is financial statement. This uh, report contains the financial summaries of the revenue and expenditure activities for the month ended August 31, 2016. Revenues in August totaled 1916105 That's an increase of 139470 compared to the same period last year. Some areas of increased revenue. Court fines continue an upward trend, increasing 10376 as compared to a year ago. And year-to-date, those fines are up 25000 And despite total year-to-date water consumption being down 7.5%, total year-to-date water revenue is up 3.28%, or 63500 Notable areas of revenue decrease compared to August of 15. Employee benefit revenues fell 175000 due to an adjusting journal entry made at the end of August last year. The entire budgeted transfer to employee benefits from the Commission Capital Reserves were not needed last year, therefore this adjusting journal entry was made to correct that. Franchise fees for August were off 44167 simply due to the timing of receipts as compared to last year. At this time a year ago, one collecting agency submitted two quarters of franchise fee receipts. Dog park donations for the Parks Improvement Fund fell 13232 due to collections received last year in connection with the construction of the shelters and sidewalks. Expenditures in August totaled 3282687 That's an increase of 207570 compared to 2015. Some notable areas of increased expenditure. Repairs to buildings and structures for the airport increased 4158 due to the replacement of the AC unit at the airport fire station. CVB expenditures experienced an increase of 8800 due to a rise in costs in the other contractual services and promotion lines. Health insurance costs rose 149000 as compared to a year ago. Uh, simply two months of invoices were paid this year. Year-to-date, health insurance expenditures are below last year by about 62000 For the first time in several months, fleet maintenance total expenditures rose this month by 6000 as compared to a year ago. Likely due to a rise in fuel prices as compared to the same time last year, given year-to-date fuel expenditures are up about 51000 The Water Fund experienced an unprecedented increase in equipment expenditures here in August, uh, up some 46000 A 58-year-old high-service pump finally gave up and needed replaced. Smoky Well S13 needed a new motor and pump rebuild. Dakota Well D4 required a new motor and Smoky Well 8 needed both a new pump and motor. Notable areas of decreased expenditures compared to August of 15. Outside agency expenditures such as economic development, social services, and special alcohol funds were down 212000 simply due to those payments, the timing of those payments. Special highway expenditures fell 315000 as a result of budgeted street maintenance, reconstruction, and chip seal ongoing at this time a year ago. And the chemicals line for the water fund decreased 15000 as compared to August of 15. Month-to-date general fund sales tax collections were at 608376 That's a decrease of 33939 as compared to last year. Year-to-date general fund collections are at 4754811 That's down a negative 224326 or a negative 4.51% as compared to this time last year. 10 of the last 12 months experienced a notable decrease in sales tax receipts, totaling a negative 328,573 or minus 4.36%. Also, it's worth noting that the 2017 budget was prepared with a 2016 sales tax receipts projection of a minus 2% from 2015 actual. Therefore, we have some ground to make up. If things stabilize and we end the year at the aforementioned negative 4.5, then would we, we would be off about 196000 from what was projected for 16. While this is concerning, it certainly is not beyond our ability of, to absorb this decline, given the amount of reserves already built into the budgets for 16 and 17. The report of quarter-to-date sales tax collections by industry classification uh, were down 87358 or a minus 4.57. Those top 10 now represent 70.9% of the total quarter-to-date sales dis tax distribution. 
And finally, the finance clerk's office invested $3 million in maturing and renewing certificates with a weighted average interest rate of 0.76%. <coughs> the portfolio of certificates that deposited on August 31, 2016 totaled $54.8 million with a weighted average interest rate of 0.58. That's up 0.32 from a year ago. Total balance on the money market on ac- account on August 31 was $1 million with a current yield of 0.2. Total investments are up $1.45 million when compared to this time last year. I would move that we approve the financial report as presented. Second. Motion by Commissioner Meyer, second by Commissioner Jones. Any uh, Kim, would you on that second or page six? I guess it is that uh, you know the health insurance rose 149,000 compared to last year. Uh, explain that 62,000 below last year. What's that, what's how do you explain that? <coughs> year, year to date. So when we compare through August of 16 compared to through August of 15, year to date, we're below last year by about 62,000. Okay, year to date, excuse me, I see that now. Okay, that's all I have. Kim, do you recall what the increased expenditure for other contractual services at the Convention and Visitors Bureau was? I think it was some printing. Um, Beyond that, I'm not certain. I don't recall right off the top of my head, but some of it was printing, I remember that. Thank you. Else? Call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. That's 5 0. Next item on the agenda is citizen comments for non agenda items. Seeing none, move on to the consent agenda. And we have two mayoral appointments <coughs> uh, one for the Building and Trade Board, Adams. Batka for plumbing and mechanical, four year term to expire 827 of 20 is first year, first term. And one for Hayes Housing Authority Board, Lacey Nynemeyer, an expired term to expire 214 of 20, first term. I move we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second it. Motion by Commissioner Swaller, seconded by Commissioner Phillips. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Next up is um, New Business 2016 Uniform Public Defense Code. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon, actually. Sorry about that. Good evening. Don't shut good up evening. Uh, <laughs> Chief of Police today's Police Department. Uh, it's been a long be day. Good. I apologize for that. <laughs> I have a couple of housekeeping issues for you. If you're being asked to consider adopting by ordinance the updated version of the 2016 Uniform Public Offense Code, and the updated 2016 standard traffic ordinance for Kansas cities for use within the city of Hayes. <clears throat> the League of Kansas Municipalities publishes a revised version of these books and the changes are presented to the commission annually. These books are designed to provide comprehensive laws for Kansas communities and for the most part they parallel state traffic and criminal codes. The overwhelming majority of both books remain the same from year to year with only a few changes being made. Handout has been prepared, noting the additions and changes that were made in 2016. Uh, These handouts have been included with your work session material. The city attorney and the staff have prepared uh, ordinances adopting the 2016 version of the Uniform Public Offense Code and the 2016 version of the Standard Traffic Ordinance for Kansas City. It is a recommendation to city staff uh, that the commission approve both of these ordinances. Agenda item number six is for the Uniform Public Offense Code. It's a recommendation of city staff that you approve the uh, approve the ordinance, adopting it for use within city hands. Uh, Mr. Mayor, it moves that we approve the ordinance 3920, adopting the 2016 version of the Uniform Public Offense Code for use within the city of Hayes. A second. Motion by Commissioner Meyer, second by Commissioner Jones. Uh, any comments, I guess? Chief, we do this every year. Why do we do it? Why do we change our city ordinances to reflect what the legislature's done? Because that way we have the most update and current laws, make sure they parallel. Uh, System with the state of Kansas. Okay. Would there be any downside to us not? I'm skip, sorry? Would there be any problem if we didn't? No. 
we just have to use it to the current laws that we have on, on, on law, but we would have problems with those laws that are uh, no longer in effect. State, state law requires that cities can pass their own ordinances, but they can't be, um, in, in essence, more strict or uh, materially different than the state criminal laws. So what we try to do is stay in conformity with what the state has so that no one can challenge a prosecution in city court. Particularly since the Supreme Court will stay and the Federal Supreme Court weighed in on the DUI. There's that change, yeah. and probably that will ultimately shake out back to something closer to what we have right. now. But for the moment, we're trying to stay current with the latest change in the law. Thank you. Thank you. Is it, this is going to be two different motions, right? The DUI one is the next right. one? Or? Well, the, this is the, the this is the public offense code, the non-traffic. Should we go ahead and vote on that one and let him finish his presentation? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. It's five votes. Switch. Agenda item number seven is for the standard traffic ordinance book, and I'm requesting that you approve the ordinance adopted it for use within the city days. I'll make a motion to approve city ordinance number 3921 adopting the 2016 version of standard traffic ordinance for the use within the city of Hayes. Second. Motion by Commissioner Jones, second by Commissioner Meyer. Um, comments? Is there any more to your presentation you want to No, sir. Go? All in favor? Aye. 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 Those nay? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Okay. Item number eight is sandblasting painting of the east primary clarifier at the water treatment plant. Good evening, Commissioners. Jeff Crispin, Assistant Director of Utilities, City of Hayes. The east primary basin at the water treatment plant requires sandblasting and painting of metal surfaces to preserve the integrity of metal surfaces against rust. After years of submersion in water, the paint coatings are failing to protect the metal parts. Over the last four years, three of the four clarifier basins at the water plant have been sandblasted and painted. The uh, East Primary, which we're talking about tonight, was built in 19, 1975, excuse me, and has never been done. Uh, for purposes of information, in 2012, our West Secondary was completed by Genesis out of Blue Springs, Springs, Missouri. And in 2013, we have the East Secondary, the West Primary at the water plant, and the wastewater clarifier, final clarifier number one, done by uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, in Lincoln, Nebraska, and Linder Painting. We have four clarifiers at the water plant, uh, two primary clarifiers and two secondary clarifiers. Water is drawn in from the Smoky City and Dakota Wells and um, it's chemically treated within the clarifier to settle solids, remove metals, reduce turbidity, and reduce hardness. Water is pumped from the primaries into the, the second set of secondaries uh, for additional settling of solids be before it goes to final filtration and then on to the consumer. And uh, the areas to be painted are right there in the middle, the dark gray. Yearly, staff drains each basin and washes all surfaces top to bottom. Uh, to remove any items that have settled and that are unable to be pumped out. The picture shown here is of Eric. Uh, Eric last November was uh, power washing the East Primary and you can see on the, uh, the bottom scraper there, there's some missing paint and some rust there. So that's good reason why that we want to get this taken care of. In July, staff sent out an RFP for sandblasting and painting of this East Primary. The city received four proposals before you uh, with DM Enterprises LLC, which, out of Wichita, Kansas, being the lowest at $55,000. Our budget, excuse me, five favorable references were received regarding this company. Our budget is $75,000, and that comes from the Water Fund Capital Reserves. The project is scheduled to be completed by May 1st of 2017. It is necessary for this project to take place during the cooler months. That way the water demand is lower and we can take one of our basins out and still run the other the other primary. I do need to make a correction of a statement that I made at the work session. Uh, I believe, Commissioner Schwaller, you asked about the warranty of, of their work. Uh, typical warranties are actually one year, not 10 years, so I made a mistake. But previous work in 2012 and 2013 were actually, it's a one-year warranty. 
I went back to DEM Enterprises and the paint vendor and they actually provided us a five-year warranty for this job that will be issued at the completion of, of the process. We have three options before you tonight. One, to accept the proposal from DEM, Enterprise, DEM Enterprises LLC for sandblasting and painting of the East Primary Clarifier for $55,000. Two, go out for new bids, or three, provide alternate direction to city staff. It is our recommendation, it is accepting the proposal to perform sandblasting and painting of the East Primary Basin at the water treatment plant from DEM Enterprises at $55,000. I move to authorize the city manager to agree with DEM Enterprises, LLC, to perform sandblasting and painting of the East Primary Clarifier at the bid of $55,000 funded from the Water Capital, Water Fund Capital Reserves. Second. Motion by Commissioner Swaller, second by Commissioner Meyer. A uh, question I would have if we if we choose not to do this, and we've been taking care of all of them, what, what happens? I mean, does it hurt the quality of the water? Well, it, it can hurt the quality of water, definitely. It's, it's very important. Uh, the, the paint is not just an epoxy, it's a zinc paint that actually helps the quality. And it, what, I, what I found out on this is if, if, if and when we do this, typical life expectancy is actually 15 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, the vendor who has been with us for 17 years said he's only had one issue of the paint failing and that was because they did not have a zinc primer coat. But it will definitely affect water quality if we don't perform. And you'd have to replace the equipment prematurely, which right. would cost a lot more than the 55000 right. right. Absolutely. Good work on that warranty. Appreciate that. Yep. Anything else, guys? Okay. All for the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. All good support? Is there Prepare to be dazzled. All right. Overwhelming. <laughs> Mayor and Commissioners, I'm uh, Assistant City Manager Jacob Wood. We'll start off uh, this month's progress report with the fire department. Um, we had uh, the 9-11 Memorial Stair Climb. We had about eight, uh, eight guys from the Hayes Fire Department participate in this event. Uh, these guys uh, climb 110 flights of stairs um, to honor the uh, 343 uh, firefighters in New York uh, that died um, during 9-11 in 2001. Um, on September 4th, the uh, Hayes Fire Department assisted the Ellis County Fire Department with a water rescue. There was a car that got washed off the road. Um, and the passenger, there, there was one passenger climbed out and was hanging out on top of the vehicle um, and they were able to, uh, to get out and rescue that uh, individual. The uh, Hayes Fire Department also did an airport crash exercise. This was uh, part of a mandate from the FAA. They require every year that we do some sort of an airport uh, um, rescue and firefighting exercise. Uh, we had salvage vehicles that were set on fire to simulate uh, aircraft. And then we also had a couple of cars out there that they were able to tear into to uh, simulate some um, extractions. And uh, with that, we had quite a few uh, different entities helping out um, with the exercise. Ellis uh, County Fire Department, Police Department, we had uh, EMS, SkyWest, TSA, uh, everybody was involved. Um, don't usually have a lot of updates from IT, uh, but IT has been working over the last couple of months to upgrade the GIS uh, software, the, uh, the website. So the functionality of the GIS should be a little bit better if you've gotten on there recently. It's a, it's a lot quicker than it has been in the past. There's also been some additional layers that have been uh, added to the GIS um, website. So if you want to get in there and check that out, there's a lot more information available than there had been previously. Finance Department, uh, they uh, hosted a joint meeting of uh, the CCM FOA. Um, region 1 and 4 with 23 different uh, clerks from across uh, the state that came in and they had some training. They just uh, discussed several topics uh, ranging from the state changes in state law and hiring and recruitment and um, health, health insurance renewal and that sort of thing. The uh, Hayes Police Department uh, participated in Corda Campus. Uh, they did uh, some, their booth focused on educating students about the dangers of drunk driving. They had a field sobriety test with beer goggles out there. Um, I was out there when they did some of them and actually the students seemed to be pretty involved with that, with that booth and the police department was doing a great job there. On to the utilities department. Uh, utilities department replaced a one-ton chlorine cylinder. Um, 
This is actually something they, they do on a regular basis. This, uh, these um, cylinders are there. The chlorines used to disinfect the effluent water as part of the treatment process. They use actually about one of these one ton cylinders a week, depending on the, the water use. Um, just wanted to kind of highlight the kind of work that these guys do. It really takes them only 30 or 45 minutes to get that thing in and out. Uh, when they're in the chlorine bay, they have to wear protective masks. So it's a, it's not a fun job, but it's something they, they do, and it's a, it's a pretty big deal getting those tanks in and out of there. Jacob, if I may, sure. when we get our new treatment plant, we will not have chlorine anymore, correct? Uh, is this water? This is wastewater. 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 Um, wastewater. Water. We're going to UV because this is very yeah. dangerous yeah. stuff. Yeah, I didn't know if we were going to have any sort of chlorine, but yes, it predominantly be UV disinfection. Thank you. Talk a little bit about our conservation ex ex efforts. Um, we have partnered with NCK Tech to install water efficient fixtures in city buildings, and this is just a picture of their, their students out there uh, installing some of those fixtures. We, uh, the, the new fixtures are shown to be as much as 66% more efficient than, than some of the older stuff. Um, we expect that program to conserve over $9 million during its, or 9 million gallons of water during its lifetime. And then uh, over the summer, we've uh, replaced over 60,000 square feet of turf uh, with warm season grasses. And we expect that uh, to have an annual water savings of about uh, four acre feet or 1.5 million gallons. So that program is um, starting to pick up a little bit. It's been pretty successful and we'll continue to, to hit on that in future years. In the Parks Department, we had uh, quite a few improvements at the Frontier Park Disc Golf Course. You can see um, there's some new placards uh, and this is, uh, this is pretty good for people that don't understand disc golf. If you, you go out there and you're at the tee and you're not sure where you're supposed to uh, throw, the, throw the disc, um, this, it shows every tee box has a, a placard that shows exactly where the pins are located so you can kind of look at them and see uh, where you're supposed to go. And these uh, were actually um, designed by a couple of interns that we had here working um, over the summer and they were um, donated by Casual Graphics. Uh, they donated material and time to, to actually uh, put together the vinyl that goes on the post. Uh, Hayes Middle School had a cross country meet at Frontier Park on um, September 13th. There's 19 different schools that participated. Uh, the Parks Department did a great job getting er everything set up. They actually had to, uh, they went through and uh, trimmed some trees, did a lot of work, and then it rained, so they had to go back out and do quite a, work, quite a bit of work to get it back up to speed uh, for the meet, but it was a really successful event. A lot of people in Frontier Park. And then uh, we have a retirement. Um, on August 31st, first, uh, horticulturist Joanne Schroller uh, retired. She'd been with the city for 21 years. She worked uh, as a part-time laborer um, during the summer from 1995 to 2000 and then uh, we hired her full-time to be our whole horticulturist so she um, has retired and that is all I have for the progress report this morning. <laughs> I was actually at that cross country meet with my son and I heard many people from other towns really compliment how good the course was so great job to the city. that along? you have anything for city manager? I have nothing else. You have nothing else. Yeah, I was going to mention something about the, uh, the Sky West uh, boardings and so forth. Uh, the reason being, I was at two different meetings this week where I brought that up about the uh, $69 uh, special from Hayes to Denver, and I was amazed at how many people did not know that. And I know we've got it on social media. It's uh, uh, kind of talk. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about it, but at the same time, I'm amazed how many people aren't aware of it. But uh, there's a $69 special from Hayes to uh, Denver on SkyWest. And I believe that last day to book a uh, flight uh, is October 5th. And I think you have to, uh, you can't book past, uh, or I mean, uh, you book up until, or your flights are good up until March what? March 5th, March 15th. Something like that, yeah, about the middle of March. And then also, uh, I'm amazed how many people are aware that they actually announced that they're going to return the, uh, the early morning flight. Mm -hmm. And I know that's been a, a real issue with a lot of people on uh, utilizing uh, SkyWest. So our boardings are up, uh, I guess, in comparison to the previous months dramatically. And uh, it's still early, really, in the, uh, in the booking period. So 
Uh, also, just uh, on the water conservation effort there, uh, with uh, regard to our warm gra season grasses, I'm amazed as you drive around town, uh, the Bermuda and the um, and the buffalo grass are still mm -hmm. very green. Mm -hmm. And I believe today is the first day of fall, is it not? Right. So, sure is. pretty amazing. That's all I have. Thank you. I don't have anything. I have nothing. I would add to that that the uh, the return flight is discounted as well. Um, True. Yes. Yeah. I've heard some people oh, raise it. Yeah, I've heard some people. Yeah, <laughs> say say that. Well, you know, you can fly there cheap, but you can't actually. It's when I checked, it was actually five dollars cheaper to return. I than saw that to go there. One hundred thirty-two so, bucks round trip. Yeah, one hundred thirty-two round trip. So, um, you know, I had an interesting conversation with uh, this uh, acquaintance or whatever you want to call it, um, older couple, and uh, just you know, saying how uh, they're still working, and I almost felt like they were working on their medications, and it reminded me that it's that. It's getting towards that time of the year for open enrollment for Medicare uh, participants. And I, so not city related at all, but I just thought I would, I don't know how many people watch. I just thought I'd toss it out there that if you're doing open enrollment for Medicare, really, or if you know, you, you're doing it for the first time or if you're re-enrolling, really pay attention to what you're doing. Um, those Medicare plans for prescriptions, there's usually a very large upfront cost they pay a little bit and then you get into what they call the donut hole which is really nothing more than a secondary deductible to where you're again paying a very high percentage of your cost um, so just it'll usually the plan will tell you what your potential out-of-pocket is but just realize that it's not evenly distributed throughout the year um, and really think about that and whether or not you have the funds to, to cover that if you have expensive medications like insulin or breathing treatments or things like that and if you're thinking about getting on Medicare for the first time and you have other options, say you're still working and you can stay on your private insurance, really look at that option. Um, I can't stress enough how many people I've talked to where they became <coughs> Medicare eligible and I think that they got on Medicare for no other reason than they kind of felt like it was owed to them all these years for paying in for their premiums and come to find out Medicare kind of stinks compared to private insurance when it comes to paying. So uh, really know your options and really think about it. And if you have any questions, I mean, always ask your pharmacist to look and see if there's something that they can do. One of the more common options is getting rid of your inhalers and using a breathing treatment because that actually doesn't go through on your Medicare Part D. It actually goes through on your Medicare Part B, which is your hospital insurance. And usually people don't have any out of pocket on those. So uh, if you just ask, um, a lot of times you can save and so it's that time of the year, so I thought I'd just throw that out there. May I add? Yeah. Um, it's pretty. It can be pretty confusing, and uh, you get in inundate, inundated with a lot of, uh, you know, offers and so forth. But um, you can go to the Area Agency on Aging, uh, or even to the Social Security office, and they're very good about explaining. It. They have uh, really easy to follow material. Even at that, it can still be a little bit confusing. But I know. Um, it's a good, those are two good sources, you know, to kind of get on the right track. Good info. Is there a good pharmacist I could talk to? I, <laughs> <Not> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would be, I would be happy angry. to help, but <laughs> we're in public TV and I don't know how many people are watching. So. <laughs> 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 Yeah, <laughs> you should have asked if there was a good uh, uh, soft drink warehouse manager. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. You know, according to his boss, there is. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to, uh, uh, before the meeting tonight, I presented a proclamation to the Knights of Columbus. Uh, they start doing their uh, fun drive in the middle of August, uh, October here. Um, last year they collected over $347,000 in Kansas. And one of the gentlemen was telling me, you know, people ask them, well, does, you know, how much of that stays here? And I believe he said half of it goes to the state. Well, in turn, in the state pays for the Special Olympics basketball tournament that comes back to Hayes. So uh, this is a pretty big benefit to Hayes, and it was an honor to do this proclamation for those guys. So, good job. Other than that, we're adjourned. Good job. I know.